All right, in this video, we are going to look at several examples of factoring perfect square trinomials, and I'm going to show you how I recognize them so that I can quickly factor a trinomial given that it's a perfect square trinomial. This can save you time with more difficult examples. Now, looking at these first two here, um, some conditions we want to go ahead and get out of the way. We want to make sure the trinomial is in descending order in terms of exponents. Notice we have x squared, x, and then this constant. Same thing over here. Another condition that has to be met to is that we want this constant term in our trinomial to be positive. Notice we do have positive 16 and positive 81. However, the sign here does not necessarily always have to be positive. It can be negative and this technique will still work. Now, in your algebra class, you probably would approach this and say, okay, well, I'm trying to factor this thing. I want two numbers whose product is going to be 16. I, I want the sum of those two numbers to be 8. And that is a positive 8 there. Notice your sign. Well, 4 times 4 gives you 16. 4 plus 4 gives you 8. Now, we take those two numbers, and the way you've probably learned to factor before is you just say, okay, x, and that's a positive 4, so we have x plus 4, and then our other factor is going to be the other 4, so x plus 4, and then we can rewrite this to say uh, x plus 4 all squared. And there's our answer. Now, there is a faster way of doing this, especially when you get to more difficult problems. I'm going to talk about that in a second, but let's go ahead and review this one over here and see how this works out. Well, now we want two numbers whose product is going to be a positive 81. We want the sum of those two numbers to be a negative 18, so be careful with that. Watch your signs right there. Well, what about negative 9 times negative 9? That does give us 81, and negative 9 plus negative 9 does give us that negative 18. So therefore, we can write x minus 9 times x minus 9, and maybe you're starting to see a pattern here if you haven't noticed this before, but we have x minus 9 squared. So there is our answer to that one. Now there is a way, and I'm going to show you the technique that I use. This is not the technique that I use for tougher problems. Here's a technique that I use for tougher problems. And let me just erase this stuff here. I'm probably going to lose more than what I wanted. Nope, we're good. All right. So here's what we can do. Granted your trinomial is in order uh, with descending powers and granted your constant term is positive. If you recognize two perfect squares at this end and this end, then there, you might possibly have a perfect square trinomial. So let's take the square root of x squared. That's x, right? Let's take the square root of 16. That's 4. Multiply these two terms together. So 4 times x, we get 4x. And if we can double it to get this term right here, if we double it, basically multiply it by 2, well, 4x times 2 is 8x, then yes, we do have a perfect square trinomial. How is this helping us? If all these conditions are met, and I'm going to reinforce this over and over, this and this will be the two pieces down here. And then whatever sign you have in front of here, that's going to be the sign that you use right there. This will always work, granted you have a perfect square trinomial. Let's look at that technique again and see if it works over here. So everything's in order. Our last term, our constant term here is a, um, and it doesn't have to be a constant, it just has to be positive. So that's something I'll hit on, uh, not in this video, but another video too. But notice we do have a positive term right here. So let's take the square root of x squared. We get x, take the square root of 81, we get 9. Let's multiply these two things together. 9 times x is 9x. And what happens when we double it? We do get 18x. So we do have a perfect square trinomial. When that is the case, we use this, we use this, and then whatever sign is in front of this term right here is the sign that we want to use right there. As you can see, this is working quite nicely. So with that said, let's go ahead and look at these other examples. All right, so 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. Instead of you trying to factor this, you know, maybe using the AC method or the bottoms up method, notice that everything is in order. This last term is positive. What's the square root of 4x squared? That's going to be 2x. Make sure you take the square root of the coefficient too now. What's the square root of 1? Well, that's 1. Let's multiply these things together. 1 times 2x is 2x. What do we get if we double it? I'm just going to start writing a d here. Let's double it. What do we get? We get 4x. Very good. So we do have a perfect square trinomial. We want to use these two terms, and we want to put a minus in between them. And therefore, this thing will quickly factor to be 2x 
minus one all squared. Feel free to pause the video and you know go back and write out 2x minus 1 times 2x minus 1 and feel free to go ahead and foil this or multiply these two binomials together and you will get that right there, I assure you. Now, look at this one. 16b squared minus 40b plus 25. This would be a bear to factor if you tried to use the AC method or the bottoms up method because you have big numbers and it leads to big products. However, let's try this technique. Square root of 16b squared, that's 4b. The square root of 25 is 5. Let's multiply these together. We get 20b. And if we double it, do we get 40b? Absolutely. So just like that, we have found our two pieces. And we want to put a minus in between them. And remember that it is a squared uh, binomial. So we have 4b subtract 5. I'm getting the 5 from there, and it is squared, just like that. Feel free to pause the video and continue, or you know, multiply this back out. It will multiply to give us that. That is the shortcut for dealing with these perfect square trinomials. Now, these last three we have here, and I'm actually going to do a, an additional one as well to talk about the um, last term not necessarily having to be a constant term. So this one here, we need to make sure we put it in order. That's what I recommend doing at least. So that's the same thing. Since all these things are positive, uh, the 3b squared is positive, as you can see there. The 6b, so we have plus 6b, and then we have a plus 3. Now, sure, we don't see the perfect square trinomial yet, but don't forget your first rule about factoring. Always look for a GCF. Notice we can pull a 3 out of all of these terms. That leaves us with b squared plus 2b plus 1. And maybe you have seen this one enough to already know that this is a perfect square trinomial, but even if you haven't, it's okay. What's the square root of b squared? b. What's the square root of 1? 1. Multiply these together, we get 1b, or just b. If you double it, you do get 2b. So we do have a perfect square trinomial there. What we need to be careful with here is remembering to bring that 3 down as part of our, factor, or our factored form of this trinomial. And since we have a plus right there, we do b plus 1 squared. Totally factored right there. Done. Hope this is making sense. So now let's uh, have a look at these other ones with bi even bigger numbers. But it may work out quite nice to the point where all we really have to do is um, uh, factor out a GCF, and it may be a very quick trinomial left over. For example, this one right here. We don't see perfect squares, but you always want to look for a GCF first. So I'm going to rewrite this. Pulling that 10 out, we're left with n squared plus, uh, dividing by 10, we get 10 in. And dividing this by 10, because we're pulling that 10 out, we get plus 25. Feel free to do this if you'd like, but the square root of this is n. The square root of this is 5. Remember, we multiply n times 5, and we double it, and it does give us that. So it is a perfect square trinomial, and we use the plus. So our answer is 10 times n plus 5 squared. Feel free to pause the video. Go back and multiply. This will give you this right here. I'm going to take this one over to a new page. All right. So right here, uh, let's, what can we pull out of this thing? Well, I know I can pull out of m squared. See how we, have, we can at least pull out an m squared out of all these things? And can we pull out an 8? Absolutely, because 8 goes into itself, 8 goes into 80, and 8 goes into 200. So 8m squared is our GCF. That leaves us with 25m squared there. Just take note, if you take 8m squared times 25m squared, if you distribute that back, you will get that 200m to the fourth, plus... 8m squared times a 10m. If you take 8m squared, distribute it to the 10m, you will get 80m cubed. And then we have plus 1 because 8m squared times 1 is 8m squared. This is a perfect square trinomial. Let's go through that process one more time. Take this square root, we get 5m. Take this square root, we get a positive 1. Multiply these together, we get 5m. And if we double it, we do get 10m. So as you can see, this little technique of you know pulling the square roots, multiplying them together, and doubling it, if you do get this thing right here, it is a perfect square trinomial. So uh, coming on down here, bring down our 8m squared from that GCF, and then what we have left is the 5m plus, remember you get your sign from right there, plus 1. 
squared. Now, before I end things, I know that's all the problems in this video, but I want you to be careful. Um, suppose I had this. Let's go back and revisit one of these problems that we did earlier. How about this guy right here? I'm going to show you some things you have to be careful with. Now, instead of this being minus 4x, I'm going to put minus 14x. Okay? So we got 4x squared minus 14x plus 1. This is no longer a perfect square trinomial because, remember, when we take this square root, we got 2x. When we take this square root, we get 1. If we multiply these together, we get 2x, but if we double it, it does not equal the 4x that we want. So we cannot do that shortcut because this thing is not a perfect square trinomial. Um, again, I, I press the undo button, but if we double this, we do not get uh, 14x, we get 4x. So this right here is not, this is not a perfect square trinomial. All right, and then one more thing to point out to you while I have you here, just one more example. What about this? Suppose we had x squared y squared plus, let's do a minus. I haven't done too many minuses. Minus, let's see here, how about 10xy and let's do plus 25y squared. Now, what I want to point out to you here, point out to you here is that, oops, and I don't want to do xy squared. I just want to do x squared up here at the front. So do an x squared up here. Now, you may say, okay, well, what type of order do I need to put it in? This comes with practice, but if you look at it, you got a squared term at the front, a squared term at the back, and then you got some type of xy term here. Well, watch what happens if we try to apply this technique. Square root of x squared is x. The square root of 25y squared is 5y. Let's multiply these two things together. We get 5xy. And then if we double it, check it out. If you multiply 5xy times 2, you do get 10xy. So this is a perfect square trinomial. Boom, boom, and then use that sign right there as I have in the other parts or the other examples in this video. So therefore, our factored form will be x minus 5y, and it'll be squared. Feel free to go back and multiply this out, and I assure you, you will get that right there. And there you have it. That's how you can multiply or recognize perfect square trinomials based on um, some conditions here of taking square roots and doubling things. And that's it for this video. Hope it helped.